Hello class, we're about to start section 3.3 that starts on page 290 and we have problems 1 through 9 odd. So with that being said, I am going to do problems 1, 3, and 9 from 3.3. 3. And then we're also supposed to do 3.4, which, which is on page 302 to 304. Problems one, three, five, and six. So for that, I would do problems one and also six. Okay, so now let's look at problem number one on three, three. It says the population of Buffalo, New York in selected years can be approximated by the following table. All right, so the table is given to you at the bottom of page 290. It says, A, let 1990 correspond to T equals zero. Let B be the ratio between the population of Buffalo in 2003 and 2002. Determine an exponential function of the form Y equals A times B to the T to represent the population of Buffalo symbolically round to, the, to three decimal places. Okay, so we want to take this formula here and substitute in for the values basically a and b all right so first of all if we look here at 1990 i'll just draw the table this time or oh, matter of fact no let me put the table in desmos here so you all could see it so it said that 1990 represents the zero year So 1990 is a zero year, then 94 would be four, 2002 would be 12, 2003 would be 13, 2008 would be 18, 2012 would be 22, and 2016 would be 26. Remember, these are years since 1990. And so we have 328.1, we have 271.2, then finally 256.9. Okay, now this is the table that we're going to be looking at, and this has been altered to reflect that T, that 1990 is equal to T of zero. So, what we have to do here. The A value, A is equal to your starting value or Y intercept. That is a quick way for us to determine what A is. So, as a matter of fact, let me just switch paper here. So again, we have problem number one, y equals a, b to the t, and then a is the starting value, or y intercept, depending on how the language is. So if we look here, our y intercept here is 328.1. So now we know that a is 328.1. Now we want to find our B. Now they tell us in the directions that use 2003 and 2002 to find our B. So basically 2002 and 2003 is here. They're asking us to use both of these values in order to find our B value. Now our B value is basically division. Now they told us to take the 2003 value, 
which is 284.6, and divided by the 2002 value, which is 287.1, and that will be taken to the T. Now, when we put this in our calculator, we want to round to two, de I mean, one decimal place. No, I'm sorry, three decimal places. So it'd be 284.6 divided by 287.1. And round it to three decimal places, it'll be 0 0.991. So that would be our answer here. Now we do have to convert this for um, basically P to stand for the population. So we are substituting uh, P for Y, but it will still give you the same results. So this here will be your final answer. That's one A. Now we come here to 1B. It says, does the function in Part A give an accurate value of the population of Buffalo in 2016? So what we would do, we would take this formula, P equals 328.1 times 0 0.991. And remember, we're looking at 2016. So your T would be 26 because that's 26 years um, past 1990. So we will put this in our calculator. We had 328.1 parenthesis 0.991 closure parenthesis taken to the 26th power. So that would give us approximately, if we round to one decimal place, 259.4. Now, if we look at our table at 26, we got 256.9. Here we have 259.4. So basically we could say it's close, but it yields 259.4, and it's supposed to be 1,000, because these are in 1,000, instead of 256.9 thousand. Okay, now we go here to C. It says, use your model in Part A to predict the population in Buffalo in 2025. So we have P is equal to 328.1 times 0 0.991. Now remember, 2025 is since 1990, so that would make it to the 35th power. Because 2025 minus 1990 would be 35. So we would take this same formula and put the exponent at 35. So it would be, well, approximately. 239.1,000. Now we come here to D. How much confidence do you have in the projection in part C? And I would say not too much. Because in 10 years, a lot of factors can enter into an increase or decrease of a population. For example, a lot of people could migrate. A lot of people could migrate to Buffalo, New York, and, you know, because they could have better jobs than a lot of places. So they could get a population boom because of migration. 
or they could get a population bust because a lot of people move out for various reasons. They could move out because maybe they feel the weather isn't nice enough or they get they get jobs like some other place become the job boom and then they leave there as well so those are some examples of how it can uh change okay now we go to problem number three it says which of the following tables represent exponential functions indicate the growth or decay factor for the data for the data that they're exponential okay so we have a Now remember, we're not looking for linear, we're just looking for exponential. Okay, now, the first thing here, if we notice our X, everything is going up positive one. So we really don't have to worry about our X values. So all we're concentrating on now is our Y values. Now remember, in order for this to be exponential, your y values have to multiply or divide by the same value. Now, if you notice here, we have zero, then we go to two. Now we know nothing multiplied by zero will give us two. So that basically lets us know. And as we go further along, two times eight is 16, but I mean, two times four is 16, but six, let me see, 16 times 4 is 54, and 54 times 4, yeah, see, that wouldn't work, because 16 times 4 is actually 64, not 54. So this has no, this um, is not constant. So the data is not exponential. because the, the successive ratios are not constant. Now we talked about multiplication or division, and when they're talking about ratios, they're talking about the division of it or we could look at that also as the multiplication so the next thing now we go here to b do another quick table so we have zero one one four 216, 364, and finally 4, 256. Now again, we look at our x's, it's going up at a constant rate of positive one. Then we look here at our y's, again, to go from one to four, we multiply by four. From four to 16, we multiply by four. And 16 to 64, we multiply by four. And 64 to 256, we multiply by four. Now, when I put in about the ratio, just to show you this real quick, if you wanted to know what the ratio is, you could take the uh, further value and divide it by the previous value. 256 divided by 64 would be four. 64 divided by 16 is four. 16 divided by four is four, and four divided by one is four. That's another way of doing it. So you could say the data is exponential and the growth factor is b is equal to four because four is what we would get from our ratios and four is actually what we're multiplying by so now we come here to c We have XY, we have 11750, 2858, 3420, 
we look here, we notice that this is going down. So we know we would be doing some division. And again, our X values are constant. They're going up by one. So what we could do is this here. We could take the further value and divide it by the previous value and so on. So let's take that. Let's just take the 101 divided by 206. And that's approximately, if we round the two decimal places, 0 0.49. Then we could take 206 and divide it by 420. Okay, then we could take 420 divided by 858. And then we could take 858 divided by 1750. All right, now, if we round all these to two decimal places, all of these are the same. So we could say the data, or I should say this data, this data is exponential. The decay factor is B is approximately 0 0.49. Okay, now that took care of one and three. Now we have to move over here to problem number nine on page 294. All right, but problem number nine is broken up into parts from A to G. So 9A, it says the population of Fort Myers, Florida from 2010 to 2016 is approximated in the following table. A, does the relationship in the table seem to represent an exponential exponential function. All right, so basically what they, they want us to do is basically the same thing we've been doing um, earlier. I'm gonna leave this other table in here, but we can add a quick table here. All right, now I'm going to do something that's a little not bad, but just a little uh, unorthodox. If you look at C, they tell us in C that this is supposed to be the year since 2010. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to represent this table as since 2010, and then go back and answer the rest of the questions. And you'll see my, uh, the reason why I'm doing that is because of the fact that you're watching me do this on Desmos. Oh, we only need six, okay. Now let's see, 62.4, 63.7, 67.9, 67.9, 67.9. Okay, so now we have a table that we could consistently look at here. It says, does the relationship, uh, A again, does the relationship in the table seem to represent an exponential function? Now we could do what we just did in the last problem. We could take the 77.1 and divide it by the 73.8, round it to two, to two decimal places, we get 1.04. Then we could take the 73. 0.8 and divided by the 70.6. And then we'll get the same thing approximately. It'll be approximately 1.04, 1.05, very close to each other. 70.6 divided by 
divided by 67.9, still very close, and so on. So we could say this here, for 9a, we can say that it's possibly consecutive ratios are approximately constant. Now, approximate the growth factor for the entire period by using a growth factor from 2012 to 2013. So 2012 to 2013, so we'll take the 67.9, 67.9 divided by 65.6. And that'll be approximately, look like they went to three decimal places. So it'll be, so this is B, the growth factor is B is equal to 1.035. Okay, now we go to C, determine the exponential equation that gives the population of Fort Myers n in thousands as a function of t, the number of years since 2010. Note that t equals zero corresponds to 2010. So we'll put n is equal to. Now remember the y-intercept is our a value. So we will have 62.4. That'll be our a. Our b is what we have here and be our growth factor, which is 1.035, and then we will leave T as T. Now it says graph the function. Now what you would need to do is just plot these points here, and you see here where we have the function. You would just connect these points. So what I could do to show this to you but I will have to use y and x. So I'll put y is equal to uh, 62.4, parenthesis 1.035, close the parenthesis, and then take this to the x power. And as you see, it's not perfect, because remember, these were approximations, but it's very, very close. And this is how your graph should look, except for you should start at zero. You shouldn't start uh, at the negative. So it'd be like here on with the arrowhead. Okay, now that's D. So E, it says, what is the vertical intercept? What is the practical meaning of the intercept in this situation? The vertical intercept is the y-intercept. So we could say the vertical intercept is 0, 62.4. And what it means is the population of Fort Myers, Florida, in 2010 was 62.4 thousand people. Now F, it says use the equation to estimate the population of Fort Myers, Florida in 2028. Do you believe this is a good estimate? So we use the formula, we will have N is equal to the 62.4 times 1.035. And remember, since we're doing it since 2028, and it's since 2010, our exponent would be 18. 
So now we could take this formula here and do 62.4 times 1.035. And we could take that to the 18th power. And that would give us approximately, rounded to one decimal place, 115.9 thousand. Now, it says, do you believe this is a good estimate? We could say that this is probably not a good estimate. Because T equals 18 is extrapolating too far into the future. Okay, now we go to G. Now remember, because we're talking about population, the reason why it says it's extrapolating too far into the future is because anything can happen in 18 years. That's a long time to make an, an estimate with population. Now it says here, use the exponential function of the population, the graph of, or table feature of your graphing calculator to estimate the number of years it would take for the population of Fort Myers to double from 62.4 thousand to 124.8 thousand. Okay, now what we could do here, we could do one or two things. Uh, we could set this up where we had n is equal to 62, 0.4 times 1.035 to the t and then we would just have to solve we would substitute in the 124.8 and then we would just solve for t because we want to know how how much is the time so we can do that or we could click right here on this graph and then we could just move along the line until we get to the 124.8. Yeah, so it'll be about 20, it looks like about 20.1 years. So we could say that, we could say the population will double in about 20.1 years. Okay, now I'm going to get back to us solving this by hand, but I just wanted to show it in the calculator. And so we could go here. Or, oh, one other thing I didn't do. We could do this here. We could just start putting in values. Since we know it's 20.1, if we put in 20, oh, wait a minute, that's not it. Okay, this is the equation here. We have to click here, click the wheel, and then do a table. And once we do that, we could type in, just say 20, and you see it's 124.1. And then we could type in 21 and we see it's 128, but we could do 20.1 and we have our close to our 124.8, probably be like 21 point, what, 14 or something. Yeah, it's 21.15 would be a little too high. So it'd be about 20.1. Now, doing this by hand, we could divide each side by 62.4. So this would be two is equal to 1.035 to the T power. Now we have not done logarithms yet, but this is what you would end up doing in order to, uh, in order to solve for this. 
you would take log and you would make this hit value your base 1.035 of 2 is equal to log this is your base of 1.035 to the t this log and base will simplify each other out and you will have i'm going to move this over here you will have log 1.035 of 2 is equal to t now we need to put this in our calculator so we go here to functions we go to miscellaneous and we click on log now we need the base of the log as well okay i made a slight error we do click on functions but when we go to miscellaneous we'll go log a because we need to change the base so we would type in the base of 1.035 then we would click on this parenthesis here the number two and we would get approximately 20.1 so 20.1 is approximately equal to T. So that's how we get the answer, using it by hand. Okay, so now that took care of section 3.3. Now we need to move on to section 3.4. So we turn to page 302, and we look here at problem number one. I said I would do problem one and problem six. So in problem number one, it says determine the growth and decay factors and growth and decay rates in the following tables. All right, so this is what we will have to do here. All right, so the first table, I'm gonna put GF for growth factor and GR for growth rate. So we have 1.02, we have a blank with 2.9%. We have 2.23. We have 1.34, which is 34%. And then we have 1.0002. And then now, let me go here. Go to the decay factor and the decay rate. Say 0 0 0.77, 68%, 0 0.953, 19.7%, and then 0 0.9948. Okay, now, to do growth factor, all we need to do is subtract one from the growth factor and then change whatever is left to a percent. So if we take this 1.02 minus one, it'd be 0 0.02, which is 2%. So that'd be 2%. Here, when we're given a percentage and we're trying to find a growth factor, we we'll change that percent to a decimal, which is 0 0.029, and then we will add one to it. So it'd be 1.029. And so we do it for the rest of them. If you subtract one here, that'd be 1.23 written as a percent. It'd be 123%. Here, subtract one. We have to move that decimal two places to the right. It'll be 0.02%. Okay, now, the decay factor is basically the same thing, except for we would do one minus. When we go from decay factor to decay, to decay rate, we'll take one minus the decay factor and then change it to a percent. One minus 0 0.77. Equals 0 0.23, and we'll change that to a percent, which is 23%. So the decay rate is 23%. Now, here we have 68%. We'll change that to a decimal. 
and we would take one minus this here, which would give us 0 0.32. Now that's how we change the dec decay rate to a decay factor. Now here we would take one minus 0 0.953, which would give us 0 0.0, what's that, 47? 0 0.047, change that to a percent, it'll be 4.7%. Now here we have 19.7%, change that to a decimal, it'll be one minus 0 0.197, which is 0 0.803. So that will be our decay factor, 0 0.803. And then finally here, we would take one minus 0 0.9948, which would give us 0 0.00052. Move that decimal two places to the right, and that'll give us 0.52%. All right. Now that took care of problem number one. Now problem number six is our next and final problem. Problem number six, it says, suppose the inflation rate is 2% per year and remains the same for the next seven years. So 6A, it says determine the annual growth factor for a 2% inflation rate. So remember, we'll take one plus, we'll change that 2% to 0 0.02, and it'll be 1.02. That would be the growth factor. So we could say the growth factor is equal to 1.02. Now we go here to B. It says, if the yearly inflation rate remains at 2%, what exponential function would you use to determine the cost of $65 cross training shoes at the T years. So we have a cross trainer or the cost of the cross trainers is equal to $65. That's the initial cost. And the rate of inflation is one is 2%. So the growth factor would be 1.02 to the T. Now C. It says use the function in part B to determine the cost of the cross training shoes in 10 years. What assumption are you making regarding the infl inflation rate? So first of all, let me tell you what the assumption is and then we'll solve it. The assumption is inflation will remain the same. That is the assumption that inflation will remain the same. So we'll go through and do C. We'll do C of 10 is equal to 65 times 1.02 to the 10th power. And that means C of 10 is equal to $79.23. And then now we come here to D. It says, complete the following table for a pair of cross training shoes that cost $65 now, round to the nearest cent. Okay, so basically, we're going to use our Desmos calculator here. Because the only thing that's really filled up is the T value or X value. But we have our equation, which makes this very nice. So we'll put in y is equal to, and y is going to replace the C of t. It'll be 65 and the parenthesis, 1.02. Close your parenthesis, and then take this. We'll make it to the x power. We'll take that to the x power. Okay, so now we have our equation. Now what we do, we'll hit on the wheel here, and we'll hit the table. Now remember, on this table here, we go up to the number seven. Okay, so now we have all of the values. 
So for zero, it would be 65. For one, it would be $66.30. For two, it would be $67.63 because you round the two decimal places. For three, it would be $68.98. For four, it would be $70.36. For five, it would be $71.77. For six, it would be $73.20. And for seven, it would be $74.66. And that is it for section three, four.